Okay, it's time to test one of those new uh, E8600s, which had very interesting batch number and everything. So 21 CPUs of exactly the same batch. I chose a CPU which had uh, good enough VID. So this one has uh, a VID value of 1.175. So it's barely in the range. The desired range is 1.175 to 1.25. But of course, there are CPU dependent variables that affect the cold scaling in the end so it's always a tiny bit of a question mark when you go cold and the cpu did 4.5 gigahertz in pi fast with only 1.18 volts which is a very strong result for any wolfdale cpu so let's hope that it goes well so the whole rig is uh, the asus rampage extreme team finland edition the e8600 which i already mentioned uh, NVIDIA 6500 GT just to display the monitor signal with capture card of course Superflower Leadex 8 pack 2000 watt platinum power supply two sticks of Corsair Dominator GDX2 memory binned by Tapaka slash Samda OCX just a simple SSD and uh, yeah Kimping Cooling F1 Dark container of course which is the very best CPU port for 775 and Kimping Cooling KPX thermal paste. So without further ado, I'll start cooling down. I'll start in Windows XP and then I have uh, Server 2003 for uh, SuperPi 1M and 32M etc. But I'll start with XP, let's see how it goes, see can we actually post and boot high enough clock speeds and how the CPU actually looks like inside the operating system. But yeah, without further ado, I'll get going and I'll see you in the OS. Okay, a pretty good sign. I could post and boot 6.5 from the get-go already at minus 120. 1950-ish on the memory, 675.20, common rate 1 and 1301 bars, RAM base extreme of course. And uh, now we can try to run PyFast. 6.5. Minus 130 at the moment, so cooling down a bit while trying to run this. But um, I honestly think that my binning like procedure is correct. So the top score should be like 13.8 by uh, Tapaka, Sam OCX. So let's try 655. Keep keep our thumbs up. 655. I might need to go back to the BIOS do the overclocking from there. I don't know how much you can actually overclock inside the BIOS. I mean, inside the operating system, it varies. Okay, we get error at the moment. I only have 1.88 or 1.87 volts actually, so uh, the vehicle isn't high at all. Okay, we passed 6.6, 14.09, only at 1.87 B core. Pretty awesome if you ask me. 665, minus 140 at the moment, 665. So this is the range of my best CPU. And now we crashed, so need to increase B core, etc. Shed, shed. Six point seven.
Okay. So that's the new rank one score in Pi Fast in the E8600 category at 6713, 6714. Memory at 2014 mega transfers per second. 675, 21, 60 common rate 1, and 13 on 1 bars. Not easy at all, but this is freaking awesome. So we're uh, 13.83, previous rank 1 score by Tapakar at 18, or 13.86. So like 30 millisecond improvement over the previous rank one score, but of course we'll still keep trying. And remember, I have 19 other identical CPUs like this to test. So we could be doing this whole week, pretty much. But yeah, freaking awesome. Thirteen point sixty nine seconds at six seven six nine. Close to six point eight gigahertz by fast. Pretty wicked, right? Twenty one sixty on the memory. Okay, and that's the uh, W Prime 1024M record score with the E8600 at 344.594 three, four, three, four, four seconds. Previous top score by Tapaka or Samda OCX at 362.9, if I remember correctly. He ran at 665, but at full pot temperatures. I ran 6721 megahertz, but at minus 143, so uh, like 50, de 50 degrees warmer CPU temperature, so uh, kind of proves that this CPU is freaking awesome and the vehicle is at like 1.93 so uh, pretty good overall and if you look there's also the W Prime 32 top score over there as well 10.797 seconds previous top score by me at 11.031 from 2017 like over five years ago if I remember correctly so uh, freaking awesome now I'm only missing 1M and 32M. Six point eight gigahertz. So yeah, so six point eight gigahertz, six point six twenty five. We are almost like one hundred mill milli one hundred milliseconds faster than uh, the previous rank one score by Tapaka or Sam OCX. And that was at 6.7, we are at 6.8. This CPU is freaking awesome to some degree. 32M, I think the issue is in uh, like compatibility. Something is definitely not correct with the uh, memory on or the North Bridge at the moment. So I'll have to see what happens. Okay, so I'm booting. At 6.930, I just want to do the uh, validation even with single core, no matter what people say. The rank 1 score is by some Chinese guy, so Witex, Witex at uh, 6.928 with uh, P45 platform. Yeah, so uh, I, I actually 
posted and booted this frequency, so 6930, and only with one core, with uh, Microsoft Config. I'm using Microsoft Config. So you can see over here. So uh, I didn't disable the core inside the BOSS, I disabled it uh, in the operating system. So 6930 memory at very basic stuff and uh, Rambex Extreme 1301 BOSS. So uh, 6930, whatever. I'm pretty sure 7 GHz is not possible. So 695. Oh, yeah. So sadly, no luck with the SuperPi 32M. I honestly tried everything I could think of. I tested two individual Rampage Extreme motherboards, so both the Team Finland edition and this newest uh, Rampage Extreme, which I purchased from Buy.Japan, which I uh, named as Nismo Edition Rampage Extreme from the uh, Skyline GDR R34. So it was actually a good decision to test this uh, newest Rampage Extreme motherboard as well, because now I know like roughly what it can do. On FSB it's awesome as we could post and boot 6.93 uh, GHz, so 693 FSB from the BOSS. We could just post and boot and uh, validate that frequency with CPU-Z and I actually checked it on CPU-Z validator uh, web page, so it's called like valid Canard PC, however you want to call it, and it did validate it just fine, but of course it has the unchecked label because it was run in XOC mode, but it didn't like reject it from the get-go like with these newest platforms if you have a physical core count reduced from the stock configuration to lower amount. So we got the rank 1 score in uh, CPU-Z core frequency validation, which is actually pretty good as we were running Northbridge on air cooling and so on. So uh, this is actually the newer Rambus Extreme, as you can note. I'm still using the uh, stock water cooling heatsink on the Northbridge, whatever. So uh, W Prime 32, I got a few improvements very quickly. I didn't really try to push that uh, score. So the best score was like 10.787, 10.797, 10.78 something anyways. The previous rank 1 score was by me at 11.031 seconds, which I made in um, 2017, so over five years ago. W Prime 1024M I passed twice at 6.72 GHz, which, which was actually pretty insane. The previous rank 1 score was by Tapakar at 6.65 GHz, but they ran full pot temperatures. I passed that frequency at minus 143 degrees Celsius, so 50 degrees warmer temperature than what Tapaka ran. Superpy 1M, various runs between 6.7 and 6.8 GHz. The highest score was run at 6.8, which is insane for E8600. The same story for PyFast as well. Various runs between 6.65 and 6.77 ish GHz, so the highest score was run at 6769 megahertz so pretty insane if you ask me so uh, the only score i'm missing is the superpy 32m i just couldn't get it running like properly no matter what i tried it would always give not exact in round error pop-up screen after a few loops so it was the same on two different motherboards i tested uh, single channel memory as well, so both channel A and channel B with many different memory sticks. I tested both LP the Hypers and power chips and it was always the same. No matter what I tried, it would always give not exact in round error pop-up screen after a few loops. So it has to be the CPU. For some reason, the CPU seems to have some very hard time in SuperPi 32M. And actually, uh, I did notice uh, like weird error pop-up screens in PyFast as well, so I'm pretty sure it's the CPU, because I've never seen this uh, happen on my other very strong E8600s. And I've run uh, SuperPy 32M at somewhere around like 6.6 .6 GHz plus quite easily with 2100 plus memories on my other 
the 8600 CPU. So it has to be the CPU. I think it could be solved in time, but it's very hard because I honestly tried everything. And I don't want to waste all of my remaining LN2 just on this CPU. I've used way too much LN2 on this session with the E8600 CPU model, but at least we got many good scores and it's definitely worth it. E8600 is definitely one of the most competed computer CPUs that ever existed. So it's very awesome to be able to put out these impressive scores in the E8600 leaderboard, if you ask me. But yeah, all of these scores will be uploaded on hardwareboard.org, so definitely check them out if you're interested in them. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in for this 775 record overclocking footage once again, and I'll see you on the next one.